This video is part of my video course that teaches how to test Java with GUnit and Makita. For other video lessons in this playlist, check description of this video. So, what is a unit test? Unit test is a very small, self-contained method that you write to test some part of your code. Let's say you have a method in your Java class that needs to be tested. To make sure that this method works as expected, you will need to write one or more unit tests. Each unit test is a very small Java method that you create. It is a small piece of code that you write to invoke the method you are testing. In this particular example, I'm testing a method that is called isEmailValid, so the gunit method that I will create will invoke the isEmailValid method and it will validate that it has produced an expected result. To test application code, we usually write more than one unit test. One unit test will test your method with valid parameters, while another unit test will intentionally provide your method with invalid parameter values. And in both scenarios, your unit test methods will validate if the method you are testing produces expected result. Now, the code in unit test is very simple and is usually very short. And this is why on my slide on the right side, I have illustrated each unit test as a much smaller element than a method it is testing on the left side. The method on the left side may contain a very complex business logic, and this is why on my screen this element is represented as a very large element. So a unit test is also a code that you write, but it is very small and is very simple code that does not contain much of a business logic. It is very simple code because all it does is it calls your method under test with specific input parameters and validates the returned result. And it is very important to keep in mind that unit test should be testing one particular functionality only. We should not try to make one single unit test method that tests multiple methods of your class at the same time. So to write unit tests, we will use gunit. gunit provides us with an API to write small code snippets to test our Java methods. Now, your Java application may contain many classes, and each class may contain several methods. To ensure that your application is well tested, you will want to write more than one unit test for most of the methods in your class. When you run unit test and it successfully passes, it will be marked with green color. But if unit test does not receive an expected result, and it fails, then it will be marked with a red color. This is why on my slide I have some unit tests colored in green color and some unit tests that have failed colored with the red color. Now let's zoom in and have a look at an example of one single unit test. Now let's start with a very simple code example first and then as we become more comfortable with unit testing, we will look at more complex code examples. Let's assume that we have a Java class that is called calculator and it has a very simple method that is called integer division. It has a very simple business logic and all we do here is we perform math division and we divide one number by another. But even though it is a very simple code example, this method can still be tested. For example, what if a developer made a typo and instead of division, performed multiplication or addition? So we can write a unit test to make sure that this code works correctly. And to test this method, we can write unit test that will look something like this. Now, we will talk about test method structure and all of its details in following video lessons, so please do not worry if it looks a little bit strange or confusing to you. For example, you might have noticed that the method name looks very unusual, it is very long and it has test annotation. But don't worry, we will talk about it in the following video lessons. Now, this method is also divided into three main sections. The first one is called Arrange. In this section, I create a new instance of calculator class. The second section is called Act. And in this section, I actually invoke the integer division method and provide it with two valid parameters. Now, the integer division method is the method that I'm testing. It is called method and the test. And I want to make sure that this method works as expected and it performs integer division correctly. So I give it two parameters and I capture the returned value into a new variable that is called result. The third section is called assert. And this is a section where I use special GUnit methods 
to verify that the result is correct. 4 divided by 2 should produce 2. So I use a special GUnit method that is called assert equals to verify that this result is correct. The first parameter that it accepts is an expected value. I'm expecting the result to be equal to 2. The second parameter is an actual value that was returned from integer division method. And the third parameter is an optional hint error message that will be printed in the console if this test method fails. Alright, so if 4 divided by 2 does not produce 2, then this unit test will fail and the message 4 divided by 2 should have returned 2 will be printed in the console. Now, don't worry if it is still a little bit confusing at this moment. In the following lectures, we will actually write this unit test in our development environment and we will run it and we'll actually see how it all works. If I run unit test in my Java development environment, like for example IntelliJ, and if this unit test passes, then I will see a green mark on its left side. But if my integer division method did not return expected result and my unit test fails, then I will see a red mark on its left side. And there will be also more information printed in the console and also in the test result panel. Now, different development environments will have different user interface for test report, but the successful unit test will always be green and the failed unit test will always be red. So unit testing is a process where developers write and then run very simple test methods that test individual parts of our application. Unit tests are very small and they run very fast. They run very fast because when testing a method, any dependencies that this method might have are replaced with mock objects. For example, if the method I'm testing sends a HTTP request and depends on a HTTP client object, a real HTTP client object will need to be replaced with a fake or mock version of it. And there can be different kinds of these fake objects. There can be a fake object, there can be mock object, or there can be a spy object. And we will talk more about these different kinds of fake objects later in this video course. So real HTTP client object will be replaced with a mock version of it and no real HTTP request will be sent. And this will make our unit test method run much faster. And we do it because unit test method is not actually testing how HTTP client works. Unit test is focused only on testing Java code inside of the method that you are testing. If the method you are testing depends on another object, that dependency will need to be replaced with a mock object. And when all external dependencies are replaced with mock objects, with predefined behavior or with hard-coded values, then the method we are testing will work very fast and our unit test will also work very fast. And this is why, if needed, I can write more than one unit test to test a single method. For example, one unit test will be to test method with valid input parameter values, another unit test will be to test method with invalid input parameter values, and another unit test can be to test method with invalid response from HTTP client. You can write different unit tests to make sure that the method you are testing works well and reliable under different conditions and always produces expected result. 